So let's let's go back a little bit to what you were saying with the Nifty Fifty stocks, and the same thing was true of the the tech bubble in right. in the late '90s and 2000s. There is a difference between a market that's overvalued and one that's in bubble territory, right? Right. Um, and you've talked about this idea of bubble thinking and being able to identify when there's bubble thinking. That seems, A, very qualitative to me, very fuzzy to yes. try to figure that out. How do we know if we're in a bubble? And how do you go about trying to sure. figure that out? Well, a bubble is a is an extreme form of a, of a bull market. Um, and you're right, it is fuzzy and it is qualitative. But I think these are things we have to ex uh, assess. If, if, if when the price is higher than the intrinsic value, if that produces danger, then you would not say that every asset that is selling above its in intrinsic value is equally dangerous. The danger is proportional to the degree to which the price exceeds the intrinsic value. So we have to have a, an idea how it's a mistake for things to sell above their trans, intrinsic value. How big is the mistake that's being made today? And, uh, you know, I would, most people would say that today stocks are selling a little on the high side. The average PE ratio, price earnings ratio for the post-war period is about 16, and today they're selling at about 19. That's a little high. You know, back in, back in 2000, it was 32. Mm -hmm. That was a bubble. So that's the difference. Is it a little overvalued or is it extremely overvalued? And you can, you can assess these things in two ways. One is quantitatively. You can look at the valuation indicators, just like I mentioned about PE ratios, uh, yields, yield spreads, what we call capitalization rates, uh, ratios on, on, um, on uh, real estate uh, enterprise values. Uh, EBITDA multiples on private equity. You can look, there are quantitative measures, but there are also, as you indicate, Dimitri, important qualitative measures. For example, I believe that it's fair to say one of the characteristics of a real bubble is the belief that there's no price too high. Mm -hmm. Like people did about the Nifty 50 in 1968, and about the tech, internet, and, and uh, e-commerce stocks in 1999, 2000. They say, this is such a great thing that there's no price too high. Well, if, if, if that kind of thinking, if no price too high thinking is dominating the market, then there's every reason to believe that things are selling too high on too much optimism relative to their intrinsic values and that they're dangerous.